Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and the Fish. We're going to look at today has many names. The Dwarf Rasbora, the Pygmy Rasbora, the Three Spot Rasbora, Rasbora Maculata. Fish with a lot of names, stays tiny, great for those nano tanks. Let's take a closer look. Appreciate you being here. So while this fish has many names, I think one thing we can agree on, it is a really nice looking nano fish for smaller aquariums. Here you're looking at a five gallon that Joanna just aquascaped. She did a video on it on her channel, the small scape, but this is a great fish. There are actually 15 of these little maculata rasboras in this tank. And as you can see, they are doing well. So this is a fish that comes from around Indonesia, Sumatra. The water there is actually slightly on the acidic side, a little bit on the softer side. But as we're going to see later, the water parameters that these fish can inhabit are quite a wide range. Now they stay small. And I think that's one of the things that make these fish such a great option for a smaller tank like this five gallon that you're looking at because they're gonna max out somewhere around three quarters of an inch to an inch the females are going to be a little bit larger and a little bit rounder the males will show a little bit more coloration but i think they both have great color and if you want to maximize that if you keep them on a darker substrate with a darker background you're going to see a lot more of that red color they are very peaceful fish. And so this is not a fish where you have to worry about them bullying each other or other fish as we're gonna see throughout this video because not only do we have them in a five gallon, we actually have around five or 600 of these in the fish room in various grow out tanks and, and quarantine tanks. Here you're looking at a 10 gallon that's probably housing a couple hundred temporarily until we can bring these fish to the swaps. We've got a few like that. But again, as you can see, they are very social fish. Uh, they are not a fish that I would consider to be timid. They are really excited when it's time to eat. So you're getting a really nice looking fish that can be housed in a smaller tank lifespan, usually somewhere around three or four years or so. Now, if you wanna keep these fish with other types of fish, my recommendation is exercise a little bit of caution. Again, we're dealing with a very docile, peaceful, small nano fish. That means tank mates also have to fall along those lines. So what would be some good tank mates if you're looking to set up a fish tank and include the maculata in with other fish? Well, other small rasboras. We've kept them with the galaxy rasbora, otherwise known as the celestial pearl daniel. The mira rasbora is a great choice. Chili rasboras, the green kubatai's exclamation point. These are all really great types of rasboras you could consider. The other types of fish, maybe your pygmy quarries, or depending on the size of the tank, you might be able to do some standard quarry cats like the panda quarry. Certainly they would be okay with adult shrimp, snails like your mystery snails, your nerite snails, otocinclus. I could see a situation where if you've got a large enough tank, like let's say 20 gallons or above, a bristlenose pleco would probably work out just fine. Now you could keep them with smaller tetras, but we want to stay away from the medium to larger size tetras. Again, these fish are really small. So maybe something like your ember tetras and your neons might work out well. If you wanted to go live bearers, your endlers, the Florida least killifish might be a really cool option as well. But as you can see here, one of the most striking features about these fish is keep them in large groups. You need at least a minimum of six. If you really want to see them comfortable and acting the way they should, try for 10, 12, 15 a piece, I think you're gonna have a lot better enjoyment and really watch these fish the way they are going to appear more in nature. In terms of the water parameters, as I've already mentioned, it's a fairly wide range. Water temperatures, mid 70s up to 80 degrees is gonna work fine. When we have them in all of those different temperatures in the five gallon that you're seeing now, that tank is right around 75, 76 down in the fish room with some of those 10 gallons with more fish like the one that we're looking at here the temperatures range closer to 80. for us the ph is right around an 8 to an 8.2 i would say that's the upper end but again as you can see here they're doing well so a ph anywhere between six and eight is probably going to work out fairly well water hardness somewhere between three and 12 degrees on your gh and kh should work just fine our water hardness is around 10 degrees for both and again they're thriving in these water parameters the one thing you want to consider though is make sure your tank is established 
that we don't have any potential for ammonia or nitrite spikes. We're keeping our nitrates at around 20 parts per million or less. And so we want a well cycled tank. This is not a fish I would throw into a tank that's brand new with uncycled filter media and hope for the best because they will be prone to issues if there are ammonia and nitrite spikes. And if they wind up with ick, sometimes that can be a little bit more problematic to treat. They don't do well with a lot of the ick meds. Feeding these fish is a very, very easy thing to do. They seem to take to all the food we put in the tank. They absolutely go crazy for live baby brine. It is not a requirement, but a small fish like this naturally likes to have those smaller insects and organisms in nature, and the live baby brine really fits that need. However, they do really well on crushed flake as well. We feed all of our foods, or all of our fish, north fin foods, so we'll crush up some flake food and they like that. Make sure you crush it up though because they have very, very tiny little mouths and so that your standard flakes are gonna be way too big for them. Tank size. Now here's where I'm gonna vary a little bit from a lot of where you, what you see on the internet. A five gallon to me is fine. Again, you're looking at a five gallon here. You've got 15 of these fish in that tank with room to spare. Now yeah, they're gonna grow a little bit larger than what you see here. They've got some growing to do, but a five gallon is a minimum, I would say. Obviously, if you can get 10 gallons, 20 gallons, the larger you go, the more fish you can keep, the happier they're going to be. In terms of decoration, what you'll see throughout all of these tanks for the most part is we have live plants. Tank you're looking at here, that's hornwort at the top. In the five gallon, I've shown you, Joanna put uh, some crypts in that tank. There's a few other plants. Are live plants absolutely necessary? No. Will they do better if they have a place where they have some cover? You know, whether that's driftwood, rocks, decorations, fake plants, yes, they're gonna do better in that situation. Substrate really doesn't matter for these fish. It can be it can be gravel, it can be sand. They don't interact with the substrate really. So your substrate choice is gonna depend on the other fish you keep with these fish. I will say, and I've already mentioned this in the beginning, think about the colors in your tank. One, this red color is gonna show very, very nicely on the green backgrounds of the plants, as you can see throughout the video. Two, you will also notice that our backgrounds are dark and our substrate is mostly dark, and that's gonna allow these fish to darken up a little bit more, show more red color. If you keep them on a white substrate, white sand, or a tan colored sand, they're going to be a little bit lighter in color as the fish try to match their background and their surroundings. So just keep that in mind, darker substrates and backgrounds are probably gonna give you a fish with a little bit more red color. Okay, briefly, let's talk about breeding. This is not necessarily an easy fish to breed because what you're gonna need is, like most of the rasboras and the tetras and our barbs, they are going to be egg scatterers. And so you're going to need to keep a small group of males and females, make sure they're at adult size. They will scatter eggs all over, usually either a spawning mop or you've got some java moss. They're not gonna protect the eggs. In fact, a lot of times they will eat the eggs. If they see small fry, they will probably eat those as well. Not all the time, but that seems to be the trend with most of the smaller fish like these rasboras. So you'd most likely wanna have that spawning mop in there. They're going to release the eggs, take the spawning mop out, put that in a small five or 10 gallon tank, let the eggs hatch, usually at around 24 hours or so. Now here's the challenge. The adult fish are tiny. That means the fry are gonna be minuscule, which means you're gonna be feeding them mostly green water or paramecium. In other words, you're gonna be feeding them food you really can't even see yourself. And it's gonna take some time, a number of weeks for them to get to a size where they can actually even consume live baby brine. So the challenge really is when it comes to breeding, the tiny, tiny fry and the tiny food that you have to feed. By the way, if you are looking for these, these fish, check out Flip Aquatics, flipaquatics.com. I will put their information in the description below. They have these fish online. If you're looking for them, can't find them locally, that is a great place to go. So these are great fish. They are colorful, they are active, they're not very timid. They can fit in a small tank. If there are any challenges, it's just making sure that you keep them with fish that are also peaceful and they're also not gonna to be too large where they can see these little tiny rasboras as a snack. But other than that, they're awesome. Definitely worth giving them a try. Again, check out Flip Aquatics if you want more information and you want, if you're interested in purchasing them. We will also have lots of species profiles in the description below for some potential tank mates. Appreciate you being here and we'll see you in the next one.